This is one of multiple videos that help you troubleshoot CCNA scenarios in preparation for the CCNA exam. We're going to look at how to troubleshoot multiple issues with Telnet in this network. So let's get started. On router 1, Telnet to the loopback of router 2. We're told that password is required but none is set. So we're able to Telnet to the router but then it's immediately disconnecting us. So on router 2, show run pipe begin VTY. On the VTY line, we've got a command called login. Login means that the VTY line requires a password. Notice we told that password is required, but none is set. So a password needs to be configured on the VTY lines. So password Cisco. Let's try again. Telnet from router one to router two. We now get a password prompt. And if we put the password in correctly, we can log in. Second problem. When we try to go to enable mode, we told that no password is set. So show run. What you'll notice in the output here is that there is no enable password. So show run pipe include enable. No output. What about secret? No secret password configured. So enable, and we could set a secret or an enable password. Let's set a secret because that's better. So we'll just call this Cisco. When we type enable now, we prompted for a password and we can log into the router. So let's test that again. Back on router one, telnet to router two, we can log in and we can go to enable mode. So we've solved the problem on router two. What about router three? I'll telnet to the loopback of router three. We told that the connection is refused by the remote host. Can we ping that loopback? Yes, we can. So this is not an IP connectivity problem. This is something else. On router three, show run pipe begin VTY. Now these pipe commands may not work in the exam. So just type show run and then scroll down to the end of the config to see the VTY configuration. So you might have to do show run and press spacebar all the way down until you see the VTY config. Can you see the problem? Notice here, transport input SSH. We're using Telnet, but the lines have been restricted to only using SSH which is better in the real world, but here we wanna be able to telnet. So we could specify all, which would allow all protocols, but from a security point of view, we may wanna enable only SSH and telnet. So show run pipe begin VTY. So both telnet and SSH are allowed on the VTY line. Once again, let's see if we can tell that we are able to log into router three. So we've solved the problem on router three. Now, what about router one? Can we tell that to router one? It says connection is refused. Can we ping router one? Yes, we can. So we need to go back to router one. Let's have a look at the configuration. I'm gonna scroll through the config See if you can find the problem. So there's the IP address on the loopback. Can you see a problem? Notice this, access class one in. An access list has been applied to the VTY lines. And scrolling up through the config, it's only permitting the loopback of router two. When you tell net, it's using the outgoing interface as the source of the Telnet connection. Now we could specify source interfaces and try and use the loopback as the source. But for CCNA, that's not required. What we wanna do on CCNA is either remove this access list or edit to the access list to permit specific devices in the topology. So for this vlog, all I'll do is remove the access class so show run 
type begin VTY. The access class has been removed. Telnet back, still not working. What's the problem? Notice here, transport input none. So line VTY04, transport input Telnet, and perhaps SSH. Now we've got the same problem we had previously, password required but none set. So when I type login, we have to specify a password. And then we want to specify an enable password or a secret password. So now we can log in. So we've solved multiple problems in this topology. Make sure that you understand what's required on a VTY line. As an example, on this router, I'll now change it to say login local rather than just a login. Notice the problem now, telnet to router two. And notice I made another mistake. I was actually working on router one. So you need to be careful which routers you're working on. So let's exit out of here. That's router one. I'll exit out of here. I'm back on router two now. So I'll telnet back to router one. It's asking for a username. So I'll try Cisco, password of Cisco. That's not gonna work because I don't have a username configured. So just to reiterate, on router one, we used the command login local. So this password has no effect. We have to specify a local username. And just to prove the point, I'll say no password Cisco and go back to the VTY. So there's no password on the VTY line. I'm back on router two, Telnet back to router one. Notice it's asking for a username. The password on the VTY line is irrelevant when you use login local. So conf t, username, David, password, Cisco. Log in now as David, and I can log in. The reason I can go to privilege mode because we have an enable password configured on the router. Notice enable password Cisco. Now we could change that by saying username David privilege and specify 15 to give David full privileges to the router. Notice the difference now. When I telnet to the router and log in, I'm taken immediately to privilege mode. And that's because we specified the privilege of the user as 15. This is bad practice, you should use a secret. So there are some troubleshooting tips on how to troubleshoot Telnet. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment on the video or ask questions. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe. I wish you all the very best.